worry about this falling off. So. Yeah. The other thing is running through London, getting some roadmen, mm. or roadmen trying to steal my shit. <laughs> you blood, that's mine, isn't it? Taking it. <laughs> my tax, my London tax. <laughs> Take two, action. <laughs> <laughs> So I stuck a chain on the bike because it's London and everyone still shit. Back to old school thinking everybody's gonna rob you. Don't feel like that in Australia. So uh, here we go. Let's go check out the first oddity on my tour of London. So we're at Brom Brompton Cemetery in Brompton and uh, you wouldn't realise it, apart from a bit of noise of construction in the background, it's very peaceful and quiet considering it is in London. Nestled away in the corner is this mysterious tomb of Hannah Courtois. She was, uh, there's a bit of a story behind her, she was a maid and her boss left her a bunch of cash and uh, she became like a wealthy lady and uh, she met this guy. Now this guy was an historian who worked with Egyptian hieroglyphs and he used to translate them. Well, he reckoned that he come up with a way of building a time machine. He'd unlocked time travel and he had met this engineer and the engineer and this guy, financed by Hannah Courtois, built this. Supposedly, it's either a gateway to another dimension, a time machine, and the interesting thing is, is the key has gone missing. All I keep thinking is of John Carter, the movie, where he locks himself inside because he's on a different plane or in a different galaxy. As you can see on the on the door, there's a really cool hieroglyphics. Apparently, it's not just her that was went, has been gone in here. Her daughters, apparently, as well. And the guy that uh, helped create this is also buried in this cemetery. But yeah, as you as you can see at the top, there's these uh, port portholes. With uh, looks like glass or glass crystal or some kind in the middle, and uh, that just sort of gives me Indiana Jones vibes of the staff with the light shining down. Who knows? Maybe that helps open the gateway to the time machine. I think it's very interesting that they've lost the key. I think that's hilarious. Lost the keys, we can't go inside. 
Joseph Bonamy. He's the guy that translated all of the hieroglyphics and worked out time travel. You have to excuse my sweatiness carrying all my gear with me. <laughs> Didn't really think this through, although I suppose uh, a spontaneous motorcycle trip will do that. And so I'm leaving the leaving the cemetery, and we're on to our next thing, our next location. Uh, just a little message going out to my brother. If do not break into it, do not try and travel through time. Although if you do, uh, come meet up with me. <laughs> like major metropolitan area loads and loads of people everyone just walking around minding their own business doing their own thing um, just on pill pot lane or fill pot lane uh, there's the smallest statue in the UK well in London and it's that little tiny thing up there just just there it's two mice eating a piece of cheese now what that represents is in when they were building the building they had scaffolding up two workmen they were fighting and they fell off and died the story goes that they were fighting over someone ate their sandwich and that the rumor is that it was the mice that ate the sandwich and that's that's why the statues of the, the little mice that was just a cool little story on my way of things but yeah let's crack on shall we <laughs> So just behind me is the Allgate water pump. Uh, it's 800 plus years of age. Uh, there's a brass wolf that signifies the last wolf in London to be killed. And it used to, the, there's writings about how good and clean and sparkling the water was from it. Turns out that one of the cemeteries nearby, the the bones were leaching into the water and that was creating a, uh, a glisten in on the water and everyone said how tasty it was but it was actually they were drinking degraded bodies so I thought it was pretty cool but then it got uh, it got hooked up to the mains for a while and now it does it's not actually working but it's still a really cool piece of uh, kit I just think it's awesome that no one pays any attention and they all just walk around delirious to it it's really cool right this uh, I've got a few more things I think, but let's crack on. So here I am in Cannon Street, aptly named because the bollards in this street are made from old cannons. So ships that were taken apart and taken apart or seized, the cannons were taken off and turned into bollards. And then that's why a lot of the uh, bollards in London and in, in England are all shaped actually like cannons. Yeah, look, they're all... They have that design, and it's literally just because they were repurposed. I thought that was pretty cool.
So I'm here at Highgate Cemetery. So this is actually spectacular. This is really worth coming to. The reason I came here is because of the tales of the Highgate vampire that would, I think in the 70s, was seen spotted mysteriously walking beneath the graves. Legend has it that he was a Bulgarian head vampire. There's also tales of like white ghostly women walking around as well and a, a woman, a, a ghosted woman on a bicycle at night. Two young girls found a half decapitated woman that was a hundred years old from removed from her grave with a stake through her heart and decapitated or something like that. Proper crazy. One of my favorite stories is the, uh, there was lots of people breaking into the cemetery at the time at night time. And what they said was, is uh, the police pulled up outside and was moving people on and arresting people if they didn't move on. And someone said, there's a vampire in there. And the policeman said, well, we'll arrest them too if we catch them. <laughs> Which I thought was kind of funny. I've just seen my name written on the wall over there, which is pretty scary. Not my last name, touch wood, but I just saw Brett and it just caught my eye. I was just like, huh? Just saw Brett there. Just thought I'm lucky. <laughs> just glad it's not Brett Joy, that'd have been scary. So I haven't seen any vampires. Unlucky. I was hoping to get bitten and turn. Pretty much one anyway with my pale complexion. You might already think I'm one, that's why I've not been me. Yeah, get a big duffel bag and tie it to your back. Great idea. Then walk down the bottom of the cemetery and walk all the way back up the hill. Just popped into one of my old haunts when I was 16. I used to come down here all the time on my little 50cc, thinking I was really cool. Actually, interesting story. There's a, there's a little roundabout just down there, and this place used to get packed full of bikes, motorbikes, people partying, and it's a motorcycle cafe. But the uh, the road was like I think it was twist and go nights, little scooters, and I was on my NSR 125 and. I rode down here and I stood on the seat. I put my arms out and showed off in front of everyone. And I went round that little roundabout. And I came back up this way. And uh, the bike went to the. I did it again. And the bike went to the left. And I went to the right. And the bike hit those railings and went over the railings into the bushes and destroyed itself. I put a hole in my knee. <laughs> but the Ace Cafe is uh, quite a uh, sentimental thing for me. Both my granddads used to come here. Uh, back in the 50s, they were rockers. The uh, they used to get their Triumphs or their BSAs or whatever they were riding, and they used to. This road was one big straight road before they put in the highway, and they used to race up and down here. And then apparently the cops used to catch people and nick them for racing. And then in the afternoon, the cops would be racing themselves, something like that. All dodgy, but yeah, this place is really cool. It's an iconic motorcycle place to go. it for London. Um, I have no idea where I'm going now, just know it's north. I don't know where I'm staying, somewhere. <laughs> so hopefully I can find somewhere nice to rest for the night. All right, let's get out of this uh, built out metropolis. Ugh.